And I think uh, before the recent tweak that, that we saw, there was also some speculation that Bank of Japan may actually shift the focus of the yield curve control to from two. 10 years to, to two years. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, for corporates, the two to five year sector is, is something that is more important. Mm. But then if you think about you know, uh, long term borrowers such as uh, you know, mortgage owners, etc., then that's where the, the 30 year, 40 year tenor becomes more important. But yeah, I think uh, from a directional perspective, we think that the, 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 the direction of travel for Japanese uh, government bonds is modestly up, though we won't expect them to top uh, you know, more than 1.5% if you're talking about the 10 year. So how much of that is simply because, I mean, people, investors have been used to, uh, you know, zero or even negative rates in Japan for more than a decade now, right? And once they're cottoned on to this, uh, uh, this change of heart by the BOJ, right, there's going to be a huge rush to buy JGBs, and that alone is going to keep yields uh, uh, tame or tamer simply because there's so much demand. Well, you make a great point, right? But I think if you think about JGB market, uh, we all know that for the past seven years, the functioning has, for the lack of a better word, been impaired because of, of the massive amount of bond buying from, from BOJ. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, once yields increase, we could uh, see a shift in asset allocation from Japanese real money investors, the pension funds, the insurers. Because right now, I mean, the cost of hedging uh, their exposure in U.S. treasuries is at around 5 to 6%, mm. which is very, very expensive. So it makes sense for them to allocate more to JGB. But how exactly that dynamic plays out, we'll have to see because, you know, we haven't seen a, a freely functioning market for a very long time. <laughs> exactly, yeah. How is all of this going to shake out in equities, which has undergone uh, such a renaissance uh, so far this year? And if we do see a yen appreciation towards 130 or even 125, then... Uh, what does that re-rating uh, look like in uh, the equity markets? And that, then there's the bigger issue of when the BOJ withdraws asset purchases from equities itself, from uh, ETFs. That's going to take away a big pillar of support, isn't it? Well, you're right. I mean, there are some, some headwinds given the, the fact that we've seen a big rally in Japanese equities. But on a 12 to 18 month horizon, we are still overweight on Japanese equities. Uh, and that's down to, you know, uh, two, three key reasons. So first of all, I mean, we've all heard about the improvements to corporate governance. And we think that that will lead to uh, an increase in share buybacks. And we know Japanese companies are very cash rich. So that would be a big pillar of support for Japanese stock market, which could partially offset, uh, you know, the withdrawal of, of buying from BOJ. Secondly, I mean, Japan, after many, many decades, is seeing growth surprise to the upside. Uh, the real growth is 1.7, inflation is 3. So you're looking at nominal growth in excess of 5%. And that we, should, we think should uh, feed into corporate profitability. And we, we could see upside surprise in Japanese uh, corporate earnings. And lastly, I mean, you mentioned that, you know, yen could, could appreciate and that could impact corporate earnings. But if that happens, then, you know, the currency angle or the currency translation impact should mean that for international in investors, uh, the, the impact should be met minimized. So overall, we think that Japanese equities have a reasonably high probability of outperforming global equities. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.